I took a drive late one night. What happened will haunt me for the rest of my life. Oh, before I forget, man. I was wondering if you could help me with something? The cashier, an acne-riddled kid who looked to be in his late teens or early twenties looked up from shoving the bag of potato chips, two sodas, and a pack of Lucky Strikes into a plastic bag. For a moment, he just stood there, seemingly frozen in mid-action. Then he finally answered. Yeah, what's up, man? I let out a barely perceptible sigh. I'd been half afraid that I would be told to take a long walk off a short pier, to put it politely. Feeling relieved, I reached into my back pocket for what was there. You see, I seem to have, well, sort of gotten lost out here. I decided to take a late night drive, and ended up getting turned around on all these two lane back roads. I unfolded the map and set it on the counter so he and I could both see it before continuing. So, I was hoping you could point out on here roughly where we are. And, more importantly, the way to get back to the main road? There was another long stretch of silence, and then the kid began to laugh, softly at first, and then louder. Dude, a paper map? He managed out between wheezes, are you for real? What year do you think this is, 1993? For my part, I simply let out a resigned sigh. I'd had a bad feeling I would be getting this sort of reaction from someone his age, and it looked like I'd been proven correct. Can't say I didn't see it coming. He wiped tears from the corners of his eyes and looked at me. Seriously bro, don't you have GPS in your car or something? He asked. Immediately, I hooked a thumb over my shoulder, pointing out the glass entry door at the beige sedan sitting at the gas pumps. Not in a Honda Accord from 1979, I replied simply. As he looked behind me out the door, I could see he wanted to make another quip, probably something about how I should buy a newer car or something. Thankfully, though, he kept it to himself. Instead, he leaned over the map, and still chuckling softly to himself, began looking at it. A few moments later, he snapped his fingers. Ha, I still got it, he said proudly, then pushed his finger down near the middle of the map and looked up at me. We're right about here, roughly six or seven miles outside Placer. I leaned over the counter to see as he drew his finger away. Here, he nodded, and I pulled a pen out of my pocket, circling the area as a reminder once I left, and then examined the map further. Okay, so it seems I could take more than a few roads to get back to Interstate 5, right? The kid nodded again, clearly already bored with the unusual interaction by the slightly annoyed look which had begun to cross his face. Sure, he said simply, then placed my bagged items on top of the map. That'll be $14.50 for this, and $28.50 for the gas. I reached into my pocket and pulled my wallet out, withdrawing three twenties and handing them to him. The register let out its trademark ding as it shot open, and he placed the bills in it before pulling out and handing me my change. Placing it and my wallet back into my pocket, I picked up the bag and folded the map back up. Thanks for the help, I said as I turned to head out the door. Yeah, no problem, I heard him mutter at me as I crossed to the front door and pushed it open. A small bell hung from the inside handle jangled as I stepped outside and let the door swing shut behind me. The sounds of the refrigerator's humming and the fluorescent lights softly buzzing was replaced by those of a summertime forest at night. Crickets and cicadas buzzed loudly in the grass around the store, almost overwhelming the buzzing sound of the lights over the pumps. The sound of an owl hooting loudly echoed through the trees, followed by the loud call of what had to be an elk. I inhaled the clean air before heading down the steps for my car. Pulling open the driver's door, I took one last look around before dropping into the driver's seat. So, did you find out where we are? Asked a voice from the passenger seat. For a split second, a wave of confusion and panic swept over me, and I spun in my seat. It was immediately replaced by a wave of embarrassment, amplified as my friend began to let out a deep laugh. Dude, were you in there that long that you forgot I was out here waiting for you? Not wanting to admit I had done just that, I shook my head. Nah, bro, not that. Just, dealing with the kid in there was a major headache, he nodded sympathetically. Craig was one of my close friends. Ever since we'd met each other, we'd immediately clicked, and had stuck with each other from that point on. And one thing we both loved to do, was take late night drives to nowhere, simply driving around with no destination in mind, listening to the radio, and occasionally sharing a joint one of us would buy. This is the first time we've ever gotten lost, though. I reached into the bag, pulling out the bottle of Mr. Pibb, and handing it to him. 
Here, I said simply, before pulling the lucky strikes out and chucking the rest into the back seat. Pulling the key from my pocket, I slid it into the ignition and turned it, the car's buzzer sounding as the dash lights came on. A moment later, the inline four quietly rumbled to life with its traditional burble. Tearing open the packaging, I pulled a cigarette from the pack and stuck it into the corner of my mouth before reaching to push in the car's cigarette lighter. As I did, I shot a glance back towards the store. And froze. A small shiver shot down my spine as I realized the kid was standing at the door and staring out at us. What the actual hell? Craig caught my gaze and turned to look himself. Dude, what the hell is his problem? I shook my head as the lighter popped back out, signaling it was ready to use. I pushed the glowing red coil against the tip of the smoke for a moment until it was lit, then placed it back in its slot. I pulled it from my lips and exhaled a cloud of smoke before answering, feeling more than a bit unnerved. I don't know, but honestly man, that's more than a bit creepy, I shot one last glance. The kid hadn't even blinked once, he was just staring with an off-putting intensity out the glass. Come on. Let's get out of here, Craig said, echoing the thoughts swimming through my mind. I put the car into first gear and eased off the clutch, the car beginning to roll forward. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw him turn and shoot the bird at the kid as we slid out from under the lights into the dark. Prick, I heard him mumble. I turned the car left and began heading back the way we came. Well, the good thing is, yeah, I did find out where we are, I pulled the map from my pocket and handed it to my friend. I heard him fumbling for a moment, and then a small flashlight clicked on as he aimed it at the map. Dude, how did we make it almost as far east as Placer? He asked with a slightly astonished tone. Longer drive than normal, I guess, I answered, rolling down my window to flick the ashes from my smoke out. I shot a glance at the analog clock on the dashboard. 2.45 it read. I let out a small sigh. Great, Vanessa is likely worrying up a storm about us right now. Me, especially. Ever since we'd started dating five years ago, my girlfriend had always been rather apprehensive about my habit of taking long, late-night drives when I couldn't sleep. She always feared I'd get into an accident, either with another car, wrap my Honda around a tree, or hit an animal. Most of the time, I'd come home to find her sitting up waiting for me, worry clearly etched into her beautiful sapphire eyes. I bit my lip slightly. Hey, you think I should text Vanessa and let her know we're okay? I asked Craig. I heard him let out a snort. Honestly, bro? No. I know the woman loves you to death, and I'm happy she cares so much, but she's got to learn you know what you're doing. Plus, you two need your space. It's not healthy how much time you two spend together. I flicked the remnants of the cigarette out the window and let out a snort of my own. It's called being in love, dude. You should try it sometime, I joked, causing him to let out a laugh. Nah, thanks, I enjoy being single too much. Shaking my head, I stared out the windshield as the headlights guided our way. I felt a slight sense of unease creep up on me as I watched the two-lane road stretch out before us, the moon in the sky almost completely blocked by the trees over our heads. I hadn't seen another car on the road for two hours at least. Well, what did you expect, Derek? You drove into the boonies, there's only ghost towns out here. Why don't you try driving all the way to Idaho next time? Shaking my thoughts away, I fumbled in the center console for a moment before pulling out a mixtape. A bit of music would help me feel better. I pushed it into the car's cassette player and hit play. A moment later, the pounding bass and synths of dance with the deads that house began blasting from the speakers. Craig let out a whoop of excitement. Dude, yes, that's the kind of tunes we need for a drive like this. He rolled down the passenger window, sticking his head out the window to whoop and holler into the night. I shook my head, unable to keep from grinning at his antics. Friggin' goofball. The playful mood helped settle my mind, and I felt myself relax into the seat, the tension flowing out of my body and out the window. For a few minutes, that's how things went. The road stretching out ahead of us and then disappearing into the blackness behind us, the music blasting out from the radio, and the soft roar of the engine in the background. I shot another look at the backlit clock. Now it read 5 minutes to 3. We should be at the highway in a minute. The thought released the last wisps of tension in my body, and fumbled into the backseat for the bag, catching it with the tips of my fingers. I pulled my bottle of soda from it and, holding the bottle to the steering wheel, cracked the cap. I lifted it to my lips and took a swig, taking my eyes off the road for a split second to tilt my head back. 
I looked back at the road and nearly spit it all out onto the windshield. In the second I'd stopped looking, a figure had stepped out onto the road. Fucking hell. I shouted, jamming my feet on the brake and clutch as hard as I could. The rear wheels of the car locked up, and the ear-piercing sound of squealing tires filled the cabin. To my horror, the tail end of the car began sliding out. Oh, hell, no 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 no. For a few seconds, the world around us became a blur of shapes and colors, and I feared at any moment we'd smash into a tree or begin rolling. Thankfully, the car finally came to a stop with a screech of protest from the suspension. We were facing back the way we'd come. I could tell from the black lines on the road which had once been the rubber of my tires. I gripped the steering wheel with almost a death grip, my heart furiously pounding in my chest. My breaths came in short, ragged gasps. There was no movement in the car for a few seconds, before Craig reached forward and snapped the music off. Dude, what the fuck? He shouted at me, his face looking as pale as mine must be.